To be completely honest, I have been very skeptical of electric airplanes. Well, in the early 2010s, a company would come out with their new prototype and it could only fly for about 15, maybe 20 minutes, which obviously is barely enough time to get you around a traffic pattern, maybe twice. Well, a few years have passed since then and electric airplanes have improved. And also while gas prices are going up, it at least seemed appropriate to check out what electric airplanes are all about. So in this video, we're gonna take it over to Andy Chan with Right Rotor Aviation, and then we're gonna go for a flight in a pure electric Pipistrelle Velis Electro. And you know what? I think you might be surprised. So let's check it out. We're here today at Wright Rudder Aviation in Inverness, Florida, and you can see we have behind us here the Pipistrel Velis. The Pipistrel Velis is the first and still world's only certified electric airplane. The Pipistrel Velis was designed to be a really excellent training aircraft, primarily designed for use in the traffic pattern to teach students how to take off and land the aircraft. And we paired the aircraft together with our gas-powered Virus or Alpha trainers, uh, and that makes a wonderful flight training fleet. But what's interesting is we've seen a large number of private individuals purchase these aircraft because of the sheer joy of flying an electric airplane. It's, it's very quiet, it's very silent, it's a lot of fun, it's exceptionally smooth. The Pipistrel Velis is powered by a 65 kilowatt motor, which provides instant torque and great thrust for that takeoff phase of flight. Once you clear the obstacles and get around 300 feet, we back that power down to a 48 hour kind of economy climb power setting. Once you've retained your target altitude, you back the power back down to 20 kilowatts of power. So the Pipistrel Velis today, we're getting about an hour of flight time with reserves as required by the pilot's operating handbook. And then the charge time is roughly about uh, one and a half times your flight time. So if you flew for about an hour, you'll be looking about an hour and a half if you're connected to the ideal uh, power grid. You can actually go on a one hour flight, you know, take a one and a half hour break and then fly it again. We do have two battery packs for redundancy. We have one in the front here. The second battery pack is right around here, aft for weight and balance purposes. The battery pack itself is very intelligently designed. It is liquid temperature controlled, both for cooling and heating when necessary. But the battery packs are designed to be fully self-contained in the event of a battery fire if one should occur. Should there be a thermal runaway event, everything is held entirely within the battery pack itself and the fumes are vented overboard safely. The Pipistrel fuselage is pretty much the same fuselage that we see on the Pipistrel Virus, which is to say it's a very strong, robust, entirely carbon fiber aircraft. Overall, it's a very silent aircraft, great to use in noise sensitive environments, let's say. It's also incredibly reliable because the electric power plant has essentially only a handful of moving parts. When you compare that and contrast it to an internal combustion engine, they have have hundreds if not thousands of moving parts in them and that leads to reliability issues. That's a little bit about the Pipistrel Velis. Please uh, check out our website pipistrel-rra.com or rightrudderaviation.com to learn more about the Pipistrel Velis. Uh, power engage switch on, EPSIS 70 system page check batteries active. Okay so yeah we're ready to taxi and Taxi at your leisure. You okay. Go to runway one. All right. Clear right, clear left, clear forward. Whoa. <laughs> that never gets old. <laughs> That's incredible. That's like. <laughs> That is wild. Just taxiing it is so much fun. When we first got it, we were just taxiing it around before we got the airworthiness certificate. Just like, yeah. kitty smiles on her face like little kids. <laughs> now checklist. Yep. Now power lever full. So this is just, okay, what does yep. it say for that? Check 50 kilowatts. Yep. Okay. So you're gonna hold, check it, make sure. Hold your brakes real tight. Okay, you got 50. There you go. Yeah. You can bring it back. <laughs> it's like a like a hurricane, you know, no engine, just just straight up wind. Okay. Yeah. Power lever cut off. Check batteries active. 
Okay, so active, active. Engine is active. DC, DC, active. Power lever, active. Okay. Inverted traffic, Pipistrel 47, Romeo, Romeo, departing runway 1, climbing to 2000, staying in the circuit. Inverted traffic. Okay. Okay, I don't see anyone base to final. I don't either. Clear okay. left. Clear right. Okay, line it up. Alright, increasing the pool. Inverness traffic, Super Cub 120 Kilo Hotel is 7 miles to the southeast. Wow, man. And I'm going to okay. overfly Over the field. Over on, we have 50, we're continuing uh, the takeoff, airspeed's alive, 40, the and, and there's 50, right and then nose down. Right traffic, we're looking for 60 or so. Okay. And you can bring your flaps up. All right, flaps. Let's see here. Up. Okay, and then you want to go to 48 kilowatts. And keep that same air speed, it's about 60 or so. There's such smooth power. <laughs> it's, a, it's so amazing. Okay. There's 500, so we could make the turn pack if we needed to. Okay. 600, really good rate of climb today. Yeah. It's such a beautiful day, too. I'll let yeah. you make a call. Inverness traffic, tip of show 47 Romeo. Romeo is turning right cross wind, runway one, Inverness. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's so different awesome. experience, huh? It's so different. It's like being in a remote control electric airplane. Yeah, huh? it's smoother. <laughs> it's smoother than anything. Yeah, besides yeah, a, a so pure so glider. So obviously climbing, we're using quite a bit of power. Nine, right. Circle and then once we get to 2,000, we'll just kind of bring it back to 20, to 2000, right? Bring it back to 20, exactly. Okay. Yeah, we're almost there. You can get uh, about, say, depending on the circumstances of how big of a traffic pattern you're flying, things like that, between six to ten landings in. Um, you know, that's pretty good. Before you need to put it down and recharge it. Yeah, that's a solid training session. Yeah, it is. And then, um, you know, we're set up here for 220 volt charging at 50 amps, but um, you can get a higher speed of charging, higher rate of charging. Yeah. Uh, once we get our three phase power connected. Six landings and takeoffs, that's plenty for training environment. Here we are at uh, 21 kilowatts going almost 80, 77, 76. Yeah, so like I said, we have a 65 kilowatt motor and uh, roughly that's 80, 85 horsepower, somewhere in that range equivalent. When I was talking about taxing around, like, oh, this is like nice and easy. Traffic, then you feel the power and you're like, West okay, oh, I yeah. got it. And every traffic, Pipistrel Vellis is above the field 2,000 feet in the upwind. We're just circling and hanging out above the field 2,000 feet in Vernet. What a beautiful day to be flying. It's perfect. Look, visibility all the way down to Crystal River and the coast there. Yeah, if you get a little higher, you could probably see the VAB from here. Oh yeah, both both coasts of Florida in one day. Yeah. So we want to make our landing uh, at 30% state of charge, so you can see our lowest battery is at 65. Okay. So we still have a good ways to go before we need to land. Well, is that for to give you an, an extra go around if you had to, or? Yeah. So that's minimums. what the, the POH says. You want to you want to land at is 30%. Okay. Um, and you don't want to do a go around if you have less than 15% state of charge. I fly more like a glider. Yeah. A lot of times. So yeah, this um, directly ahead of us, um, this island and this uh, lake uh, has a pretty cool history. You can see that the island there has uh, a bunch of farms on it. Yeah. Well, so last weekend was the uh, strawberry festival. Oh, how nice! And uh, they provide all the strawberries for that. But but the farm that that provides the strawberries is called Ferris Groves and it's named Ferris Groves after the the original founder and owner of the farm uh, who who coincidentally designed the Ferris wheel really yeah Whoa. So a little known fact uh, the Ferris wheel was designed and invented by the gentleman who originally owned this farm so yeah so down below us you could see Liberty Park that's uh, uh yeah, oh with a big dock but on, yeah so that's part of it um, oh that looks so we have nice. a big water tower and uh Nice little area that uh, the city built up, and you can see the historic courthouse square right yeah. there. Yeah. Beautiful vintage courthouse. It's uh, the site of many uh, festivals and events. In fact, yesterday we just had the uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade in downtown Inverness. Oh, cool. Yeah, I like Inverness.
a nice town. I know of so many pilots who also just take out their airplane in the afternoon and just do a flight exactly like this. Just oh, yeah. to go and enjoy the air, not even go anywhere. So even for someone like that, this would be perfect. Now, there's a lot of people who buy these privately because it's it's so smooth, it's so fun. It's just a joy to fly, yeah. yeah. It certainly is. So in terms of flight characteristics, you know, Pipistrel was intelligent in, in that what they did was took an existing airframe, in this case they took the Virus airframe, yep. and kept it all the same, and all they changed is the power plant. So your flight characteristics are basically the same as the Virus or the Alpha, and that way it's an easy way to introduce people to electric aviation. Right now this kind of represents you know, where Tesla was in the early 2000s. Yep. Right now it is certainly you know more expensive than the gas counterparts. Uh, you know, you have a more limited time frame and therefore range, uh, and it is a two-seater. But look at where Tesla is now with the Model 3. Uh, yeah, and incredible. so it took, you know, 10, 15 years to get electric flight to where, electric ground-based EV vehicles. Right. Um, you know, to where they're affordable, to where they're competitive. And we'll see the same thing very soon, actually, in, in the aviation world. And you can reduce your power and begin your descent okay. down to TPA. So you can almost probably go to near idle for your descent. Okay. And if you actually go to idle, we engage the motor oh, so it to regen oh, some power. Really? It isn't uh, worthwhile from an energy use perspective to regen, yeah. but you're kind of using your motor like air brakes right now. Right. Uh, to aid you in your descent. That is cool that they put that technology in there for uh, regeneration, though, even if it's not ideal or more efficient, but that's really cool. And here we are midfield. You can go ahead and we're in flap operating range. You can okay. go ahead and put your first notch of flaps. And we're in traffic, Pippa Show 4 7, Romeo, Romeo, turning final, Romeo 1 to And when you're on final, you can go to your second notch of flaps. Okay, I would put that down to idle. So we're a little high. Okay. No problem. That's where the regen helps you. And we can straighten up. <laughs> I was dropped it a little bit, but our landing gear held it, no problem. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs>